Hey everyone, so yesterday and the day before I spent forever editing my video and um, I just have to put this little disclaimer in at the start because the segment where I use my airbrush just went completely haywire and I don't know why. No edits I did made it better, it just kept making it worse actually. Um, so the piece that I talk about in the video a little bit later regarding the airbrush with the flares and things, that's this piece, but for the demonstration I will use the same colours but I'm going to do it again because um, I'll have to snip it and put it back into the the footage with everything else because I just don't know what the heck was going on. So don't be alarmed, it's going to look different and that is why. Okay, see you! Hey everyone, um, I wanted to Okay, so it's occurred to me that um, some people don't know what to move the inks with. Um, so I just thought I'd do a quick video on those things. Now, you can use the tilt method, which is just where you have all your inks down quite wet and you just move them around until you are happy with the way they've mingled together. Um, and then you just set it down and let it evaporate. Uh, so that's, that's obviously not forcing any air onto it that's just letting it do its thing but okay so there are air bulbs I have a few different kinds um, I do not have the Tim Holtz Ranger one and based on the way I see people use it in videos I think it might be slightly larger than this one um, but I don't know I don't know how the airflow is this one was just something I got off eBay and all you've got to look up is air bulb and that's what will come up this is also one I got from eBay I like this one because it's stronger the the smaller, tighter nozzle gives me a thermal push. Due to this being a handheld thing, um, it does build up some humidity. The warmth of your hand and the constant use, uh, you will end up with some of those humid um, moisture beading things going on. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if that bothers you. Uh, again, I just go with the flow. If there is some humidity beating up on your work, you can just get some paper towel and dab it off. It does still leave um, a slight patterning in it that, you know, humid free airflow uh, doesn't create. So just be mindful that you can dab the moisture away, but you will still get these little patterns. Um, not a problem for me, but you know, you might dislike it. But yes, so this does build up some humidity. Um, we have a, an embossing heat gun. Now, I do not use these on my synthetic paper. The con for those is that it is far too hot and it melts it because I don't know if you know or if you recall me saying somewhere along the way, Yupo and Nara um, graphics, uh, Pixis and all the other all the other Yupos or synthetic papers, they're all plastic based. It's polypropylene and they're plastic. So you will warp it, you will melt it and there's no bringing it back from that. Um, it's not like a regular piece of paper where you could flatten it out under a book or something. It doesn't work. Once you've melted it, it's melted plastic. So you can use these fleetingly if you have synthetic paper and you want to use it to just quickly push some fluid around and you've got a lot of fluid on your substrate, then that's okay. But you don't want to be holding it close and you don't want to be holding it still. If you want to use it, you can very carefully be mindful that you have to keep moving it. Um, but great for tiles and ceramics and things like that. You do have to keep in mind that you are heating up the ceramic at the same time, which can get very hot and you might burn yourself. So that's something to be careful of. And the other one is our trusty hair dryers. These are the wand styler ones where you remove the brush bristles from the, um, the tops and away you go. I really like this one. This is just a cheap one I got from AliExpress or cheap, I don't know, I think I paid 20 something dollars. Uh, the lower the wattage, uh, the, the better it is for alcohol inks because it's not so strong that it's just going to blast your puddle everywhere. So um, yeah, keep in mind if it's a low wattage dryer, uh, you will have better control. And um, so this is brandless. This one is the Conair one that we used at um, Porcon and I really, really liked this one. That's why I asked Billy if I could have one. Um, Bear in mind I'm Australian so I had to make sure that I could change the vaults. That's something you have to be careful of when you're buying your dryers from overseas or Amazon or AliExpress, eBay, etc. <clears throat> you don't want to blow your power supply up so you must be mindful of that when you're buying these kinds of things. The other one that has a really good reputation is a Remington wand styler. 
um, that was the first one I blew up. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you heard that, my sheep are outside. <laughs> Meh. Okay, so um, yes, be mindful of the, the voltage, the power supply, um, but Remington is good. Anything that is a wand styler is usually pretty good. You do have to check it out. Some of these actually have a shaft that the hair piece, uh, like the bristled piece, slots over and that's no good. Um, you can usually break them off, but I mean, that's a bit sketch. So if you can get one with no bits, you just remove the hair pieces and away you go. Um, setting wise, I'm not fussy. I usually just lo use the lowest setting available anyway. Um, it's not imperative for me that it has a cool setting. Uh, that might be a preference for you. The other thing is an airbrush. I started inking, um, I, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago, I'm not sure. And um, I bought this relatively soon in my adventures and it intimidated me which is really silly I don't know why but it intimidated me and I let it sit in the box for about three years before I got it out maybe even longer um, but I finally started using it and it's incredible I love it um, one of the pros for this is the one I have has adjustable PSI um, not necessary you don't have to get an adjustable one um, it's the only one I've ever used though so I can't compare it to the ones that don't have um, PSI control. In saying that, I think that the the minimum airflow that you would get from ones that are just set at a certain speed um, would be fine for, for doing what we do. Um, one of the cons is that this also builds up liquid. There is a water trap on my uh, compressor, but sometimes that's still not enough if I've used a lot of it, and you can get little fixtures that add an extra water trap to your um, the end of your hose. I don't have one obviously, uh, but I just make sure I empty the, the trap often and um, turn it off if it starts to heat up a little bit too much and give it a rest. But yeah, so I really like this for um, the way it moves and dries the ink. So it dries the inks slightly slower than a heat tool, of course, because it's just cold air. Um, but everything does have its own little nuance. You might not notice it, um, and it might take you a while to notice, but every little tool will have a different result to the way your ink looks when it's dry. Um, I find the air bulbs, you have a lot of small, um, uh, what's the word? You just, you have a lot of small patterning and swirling going on because you're just using a very small amount of air in a concentrated area. Your hair dryers are better at getting a longer movement, a lot more flow. Uh, it also helps with your fades because you want to push your ink away and then bring it back to the center. And as you're bringing it back to the center, it's drying as it comes back. And that's how you get the nice fades because it's pushing the dye back onto itself. Um, probably similar to, I don't know if you can see that, similar to that. Um, so yeah, your hair dryers will do that. Your airbrush will also do that. But like I say, it's your hair dryer, sorry, your airbrush has the cold air, so uh, you have a bit more playtime, I suppose. And it's the same with the air bulbs. Um, I likened it very much in my classes for people to understand, like driving a slow moving car. You have more control when your car is moving slowly. And it's the same with your air tools. If they're moving slowly, you have better control. Um, you're less likely to lose track of what's going on. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is straws. I don't like them. And I want you all to make your own decisions, but this falls under, under my um, my safety umbrella. So if you wish to use a straw, I want you to be mindful of the safety that needs to be involved. Um, you're, you're around a lot of toxic vapors and I, I still think that safety is important because we only have one set of lungs and um, I myself know the short-term effects of uh, being around too much isopropyl, it's not nice. You know, I end up with headaches and stomach cramps and things like that. That's why, um, especially those of you who came to Porkon, that's why I drilled safety into you. Um, I know how yucky it feels to have um, a high exposure in a very short span of time. Um, and while I'm not a scientist or a doctor or anything, um, it makes me very curious about the long gut term effects to our lungs and to our organs. You know, if I'm getting stomach cramps and headaches, Sorry, my kids, my kids. <laughs> I should have picked a different day. If I'm feeling those effects internally, it just makes me wonder what it's doing, you know. So, I mean, pay attention, look. There are warnings. 
on the label. Um, I think that's blurry. There we go. So it's flammable and it's poisonous. Okay. I need you to pay attention to that. Danger, flammable, irritant, vapor, harmful, harmful if swallowed. Read side panel. It contains ethanol, isopropanol, glycol ethers. Okay. Um, may cause flash fires, etc. So there's warnings on this and nobody seems to pay attention to that. And I want to bring that to your attention. Um, and just FYI, there is also apparently formaldehyde in Copic. So that is something else that, um, you, you know, you want to be using a respirator for. So back to the straw. I don't use these because you're around the vapors and then you're putting this to your mouth, which is then right on, uh, right above those vapors and your substrate. And yes, you are blowing, but when you blow, what's the next thing you do? <gasps> you inhale. <sighs> And you just you're breathing it all in and it's just not good it's not good uh, if you want to blow with your mouth be mindful of how you do it have your respirator on inhale blow put your mask back on you know time your time your shit better <laughs> you know that's the best i can say and yes i do wear my respirator I've, I've had this question asked a few times since pork on i do wear my respirator all the time all the time always always and again, I don't care if you think it's uncomfortable. And I'm just going to say that. I don't care if you think it's uncomfortable. You know what? I've got a bump on my nose. Thank you, genetics. And it hurts. I end up, if I'm inking for several hours, I do end up with a sore nose. But you know what? I like my lungs better. So that's, that's, the, that's the price I pay for protecting my lungs. I get a sore nose. So what? I'm sorry, but so what? Please wear your masks. Make sure that you know that it's fitted properly. Make sure that you're wearing it correctly, etc. Make sure you change your filters often. Um, please don't ask me those questions. Um, read the instructions on your masks. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I have. I've been asked a few times since pork on. Uh, do you always wear a mask like every time? And yes, I absolutely do. Um, it's just important for me. So keep that in mind. Uh, but anyway, so I guess now that I've said all those things. Um, if there's anything that you wanted to have a bit more info on or I didn't I didn't explain properly please post in the comments and I will answer you um, and otherwise I will I will do some demos with the air tools for you to see what each one does okay so I'll see you soon down there on my table all right so that's just um, ignore the shadowing on that page that's an old stained piece of Yupo um, I'll actually talk a little bit about the staining later but uh, okay so I'm just swirling it around to spread it and I will start with the air bulbs the uh, I forgot to mention the white one there that one um, I believe it or not I got that from the pharmacy and then the other two I got from eBay quite often they are used for um, photographers use them to clean their lenses so that they don't scratch them when they're wiping dust and things away so that's what I'm doing here, just showing you the different, um, the slight differences I get out of it using each one. there I'm pointing out the beading that uh, you get from humidity so uh, as mentioned earlier that little air bulb that I'm using does warm up in my hand and creates the beading um, but again I, I just I just go with it uh, and then of course I sped that up because I wanted you to see some real time and then some sped up just to stop wasting everyone's time but again here is more humidity I just wanted to let it catch the light for you to see and then I will dab some off with the paper towel 
and show you the the marking that is still there okay now we're going to move into the hairdryer uh, I will only use one for my demonstration because they both work relatively the same pushing the ink out and then bringing it back in on itself uh, one thing I forgot to mention in my earlier portion of the video was um, that the lines you will get with the heat tool are quite pronounced in comparison to um, airbrushes and air bulbs uh, I'm talking about um, I'm not talking about the the long um, ribbon lines I'm referring to the rounded lines that you will see start to form on the outer edge on the right hand side I mean they're they're everywhere but you see them most most predominantly on the right hand side so your heat tool is um, uh, very adept at bringing those ripples into your work Alright, I've pre-dried a patch of ink, so I laid my alcohol, my coloured ink and then my brass down and I just dried it so that I could um, have something to work with to show you guys or get straight into the, the flares that you can make with an airbrush. So uh, as you can see, I put some drops of alcohol down at the outer edge of this patch. This is on non-staining paper, which is why... Um, this fade will be clean and there will be no um, no edge lines to that outer um, dry area I've started with so with this kind of paper the more alcohol you add the more you'll be able to move the ink away and it will come back to um, a, a clean background but as you can see I'm keeping all my airflow from one side when I'm drying it so I will wet the dry area and reactivate my inks and I'll stir it around a little bit with the air once I've got a, a nice saturation in the puddle that's when I start pushing the the puddle back onto itself from one side and that's how you create your flares so you put the ISO down you reactivate your inks and then you push it back in towards itself um, I am doing this in real time I will speed it up in a short moment because you will get the gist of it but I've kept it in real time so you can see um, you know there's time to play with with the cold air 
uh, it does dry nicely I've got it set about 35 psi I think 30 or 35 and to me that is something I, I never need to adjust that's a really good number for me to work with for what I do um, if I was doing larger areas I might consider adjusting it but even then when I've done a large piece I kept it at that so you know food for thought all right guys I'm gonna speed it up from here um, I'm pretty sure you've got the idea so away we go See? Mask face. But whatever. Totally worth it. Alright, so, uh, and then I know I, I know I tampered with this one anyway, but um, you can see the comparison between using something with more force and the air bulb. You know, the smaller, more concentrated sections, I suppose. Um, the puddle size you use will also depend on what results you get. So I could get longer fades with my air bulbs if I had a larger puddle and more patience. Um, but I just wanted to show you how it dries and alternatively um, you can use these tools for other things anyway so you know everyone likes the the lines which you would have seen in this one before I altered it there's still a little bit of it left okay so your the heat tools sorry the heat tools create faster lines you'll get you'll get results quicker and um, <laughs> immediate satisfaction when you see those lines forming um, with your heat tool because it's drying it faster. But anyway, so I think that's everything. If I forgot something or you were curious about anything, please ask and I will get back to you. And I hope this helped and I'm sorry about the background noise. Again, I have my, some of my children at home, some of my children are not home. So the, the, the noise was, you know, in the mid-level. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching and I hope this helped you. Okay, bye.